In this rapid global development, I anticipate that INSEF will be at the forefront and will be driving the development of neuroinformatics during the next decade. The new era of neuroscience is very much about data and data-driven approaches. And this is a challenge for the field because the next generation of neuroscientists absolutely need the skills to handle this data. Neuroscience is not anymore a biology field only. It's a biology field for sure, but it's also a computational field. Uh, and we're moving from the wet lab to the web lab. I find it really, really frustrating when I see great graduate students wasting time reinventing the wheel. They're doing work that's already been done, they just don't have access to it. Before neuroscience was very closed, you produced your data, you analyzed your data, you threw it away, you published your paper. We're now asking you to do something different. We're asking you uh, to openly share the products of your research. We're asking you to share your data. We're asking you to share your tools. Those are skills and those are practices that generally have to be taught and developed. And so an organization like INCF is part of that very important community infrastructure that allows us to develop what the norms and practices are for both open and fair neuroscience. INCF is doing a lot of work to make the world of interoperability in neuroscience very effective, as well as bringing people together from different backgrounds that handle different kinds of data to ensure that they can speak to one another and communicate effectively. I think INCF is unique in that it's really a champion for sort of data standards, open neuroscience. It's all like a like sort of a family. We share the same problems. When we are meeting, we're actually finding solutions to these problems and working problems out, and this is, this is great. The thing I like most about INCF is its educational products uh, that it's putting out to the research community for free. So the training space is this place where uh, the community can go and find training material developed by Ebro, Fence, HBP, uh, OHBM, Reponym. All the training material can be indexed and characterized for people to easily find a specific training on what they need uh, in terms of neuroscience. So the training special is key for NCF because we want to train a new generation of neuroinformaticians. The knowledge base is a little bit like a Wikipedia page. So you would go, find the term, uh, have a description, uh, but also have the tools and the, and, and the data that are related, as well as the literature around that term. So INCF is bringing people together to learn from each other and to actually improve the ways in which we can use the science that's already been done to innovate for better science in the future. I think working together is important in practically all human endeavors. With regard to the nervous system and science, of course, one should strive to interact rather than compete. So we figured we should start actually with um, um, that video because it sort of is a good example of what INCF is um, doing uh, for us. Um, and now I'm going to bring Matthew on stage because we couldn't have him before because Crowdcast only allows four people on stage. It's a very small stage. Um, okay. Uh, and I think that... Um, uh, we should, um, I think Camille also wanted to join us. Um, so maybe, um, Selim, are you okay if uh, you, we vacate your seat? Okay, cool. So I'm gonna have uh, Camille join us as well.
there's a lot of like seat swapping on this thing. <laughs> it's just it's like a musical chairs without the music. It's really <laughs> just uh, not. Uh, I mean, we could have music playing in the background, but I, I, it get even more confusing for everyone. We'll you get there. Very eventually. entertaining host, I have to admit. It's very <laughs> entertaining to watch you navigate all the issues and troubleshoot on the fly. While telling dad jokes. It's very <laughs> Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. That's the only kind of jokes I have. Uh, so should I uh, introduce us or? Yeah. yeah. Uh, just, just. I think we have a lot of people here who might who might be new to the brain hack community and might have never heard of INCF. So yeah, give get, go for it. Tell us everything. All right. Right. Well, not everything, maybe because that just take a while, but uh, my name is Helena Ledmer. I am the Director for Development and Communications at INCF, and Matthew Abrams uh, is the Director of Science and Training. So we're going to, I'm not going to talk about history and, and all kinds of organizational stuff because I'm going to, uh, we wanted Matthew to sort of dive right into the, the good stuff that's relevant uh, to this community. So Matthew is going to talk a little bit about the science and training bit, and then we're going to talk about uh, more how uh, we can sort of bring the communities together and collaborate better in the future. And that's why we have Camille here, who has experience from being involved in both INCF and OHBM for a long time. So Matthew, take it away. Okay, that was a great introduction. So I kind of have to change how I was going to do this. But I mean, so as Elena mentioned, the goal for us really is just to see how we can bring the two communities together. IMCF has been a major supporter of OHBM's Open Science City and the hackathon since 2013, which I believe is the first year that the hackathon was held in Seattle. And it started off primarily with members of the INCF community who wanted to bring the open science, uh, data sharing, uh, standards hackathon sort of mentality that's part of INCF to the OHBM community. So since then it has grown and grown and grown to what we are today. So we're very impressed with the investment that we've made every year that it's growing the OHBM open science community. But for us, we would like to bring that back in to the fold because we feel that OHBM is developing into a silo and that's exactly what the open science is supposed to be against developing a silo. So we want to bring you back into the fold. And so the purpose of this primarily is just to um, have a discussion about what would it take? What do people perceive as the barriers or the challenges to being, to working through INCF? Um, how we can work together. And before we get to that part, I just, as we mentioned before, that some people may have not have heard of INCF before, but I'm certain you've heard of some of the products and services that have been developed as a result of participation in INCF. Um, so we're gonna have a little poll going on. Are you ready for that one? So if you've heard of BIDS, the Brain Imaging Data Structure. Let me just send the poll. Are you sending the poll? Okay. Yep, let's make it visible. Can you see it at the bottom of your screen? So we're gonna have a quick, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have, okay, so the brain imaging data structure bids. We, so with people doing that one. NIDM, the neuroimaging data model. Have you heard of that one? Let us know. Let me, you're, you're going faster than I'm going that I can type without making huge typos. So it's gonna be very. Yes, so NIDM. <laughs> we can leave a bit of time. We only have 16 votes. Come on, people. Do you know bids or not? It's an Do you know bids? Come on, people. Let's see. Oh, yeah. The poll is right next to the... Yeah, maybe people can't see the poll. You can only see, only see one. Uh, it's just you have to open it, right? You have to click yes. on polls and then you see it because it's only 22 votes. So I think... And there and we are have, 70 yeah. people in the, 76 people in the session. So Yeah, so definitely we should have more answer than this. Yeah. So please click on polls and click um, on polls. Yes, click on polls. <laughs> <laughs> that, how is that supposed to make sense? <laughs> We've met, but we cannot claim <laughs> <gain> friends. <laughs> 
Oh, my GM oh, is dear. really nice. It's a good friend, I promise. Well, yeah, yeah. well you would say that, Kami. <laughs> I'm pretty objective, as you can imagine. I know, I know, I know, I know. So I'll put up the next one. It's called RRID, Research Resource Identifier. Yeah, I mean, people have been hearing about bids for the past two days. So if they didn't, if we didn't have a majority of people <laughs> saying yes, I'd be going like, what's what's going on? <laughs> like, where have what's you been in the past on? three days? What's going on? And I'm sure that the one no vote we get is maybe just a contrarian who's just going like, okay, we have a few, we have a few, we have a few in the crowd. That was just... me. <laughs> 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 We're a few people just uh, just who just gonna take pleasures and just going the other way if if uh, just to show that they can. And then finally, the OHBM Open Science SIG. That's an easy one. You should get one hundred. I'm curious easy. about this one. Woo! Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like if we get too many no's on that one, I'm really gonna start worrying about what is going on. <laughs> Communication problem. <laughs> yeah, we definitely have a communication problem. Uh, on the last well, one. Well, now that we've said that, it's not a very objective poll, I guess, because we've just <laughs> shied out the people who didn't know what this was. So if you don't know what's the open science thing, yeah, just ah, say no. yeah, there, you, there we go. We have yeah. we have we have yeah. the contrarians uh, dropping in onto the OHBM uh, okay. open more. science thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So I guess we should advertise it even more. Yeah. Uh, just the reason why I bring up these things, because these are things that have been supported by the INCF network. So this is where we dump resources into. Um, Helena will speak a bit more about we've changed the model and how we operate now. So it really maybe is important. Should, huh? Maybe we should do a poll about how many has actually heard about INCF before. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's a good point. That's, yeah. I, that's a good point, actually. That's a very yeah, good yeah, point. Let, yeah, let me let me um, let me try that. And then we have a question. I don't know if we take questions in the middle, but we have a question. I think. I think. Yeah. yeah I think we, we could. Take we could take questions. We could take questions. Uh, so the question is. Uh, how is our ID different from uh, Zenodo? So while we are, you keep answering the poll, you can maybe go on that one. Okay, so the purpose with the research of the RIDs, we're trying to give IDs to all the units of research. So you can have an RID for your project, you can have an RID for your infrastructure, you can have an RID for your uh, uh, software, all sorts of things. And this is all trackable using uh, Google Scholar. So for you as a developer, it's a good way for you to be able to see, here are the people who are using my uh, resource. And of quite a few journals are uh, making it uh, mandatory where you have to include the RID for these things. So if you are a developer, it's a really good thing for you to have this as a way of tracking usage uh, and how people are working with your stuff. And also if you've ever done, any, I was an experimentalist. So when I did my research, people oftentimes wrote the wrong antibody. So you would go through an entire experiment and say, ah, this was completely incorrect. So the, using hypothesis combined with the RID, you can go back, you can annotate the web and say, no, this is the correct antibody that they meant in this. And that is all on the web and you can see it. And yeah, uh, Camille has just put in the links to it. Or if you go to incf.org, you can see a brief tutorial on the RIDs yeah. and why you should use them and how you should use them. So that's a good thing. So that's why uh, we advocate for the RID. Uh, uh, we're going to get sidetracked, but uh, but uh, um, uh, uh, Stefano was asking right after this, so RID, would it be possible for, um, to, for early stage of thesis just to keep track, to use them? Say it again, I, I missed it. 
so I've, I've posted it in the chat, but so our ID would be possible for early stage of thesis just to keep track. I think, Stefano, you might want to rephrase this because I'm not sure exactly how that. Uh, no, that was Celine who asked this, apparently. Yeah. What do you uh, mean? More? I don't know, Selim. I will let you. Um, I will let you rephrase that um, because otherwise we're gonna. <laughs> and most okay. So uh, we have uh, quite a few people who had not heard about INCF. Uh, most had heard about DOHBM OS SIG. Our ID is fairly new, it seems to the people here. Uh, and IDM a bit less. And bids. I think the person who voted no decided to change their vote and went for a yes instead. So we have 100. percent We have 100 percent votes on 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 bids. Good. <laughs> uh, yeah. So sorry. Um, so, so should I just do like the 30 second intro on INCF for those who have no clue what we're doing? Probably we should do that. Yeah. All right, so um, we've been around for about 15 years by now. Um, our current focus is um, to, to develop and endorse uh, standards and best practices. And the standards and best practices that we do support, they have to comply with a FAIR principle. I hope everybody are familiar with the FAIR principles. Just in um, case, maybe just remind in case. people. Okay. Yes. So FAIR is a very uh, convenient acronym. Uh, it stands for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So it's very, it's very open science. Um, for your data and your metadata, yes. so it can be findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable by humans and machines. And machines. Oh. Yes. No, oh. it's not just the, yeah. <laughs> Um, so that's that's one of our, our main activities, uh, and in part to support the uh, uptake uh, of standards and best practices, we do a lot of uh, activities in training, both in general neuroinformatics, but also specifically in how to um, implement these standards and best practices on your own research. Uh, in order to support all of these activities, we are doing a lot of outreach like we're doing right now. Uh, we collaborate uh, within a lot of different projects and initiatives. Uh, we act as uh, sort of an intermediate between the large uh, international brain uh, projects, like the Human Brain Projects in Europe, the US Brain Initiative, uh, the Brain Minds Project, uh, the Australian Brain, I forgot what it's called right now, but the big Australian project, uh, CONP in Canada, and, and whatever else have you. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's what we do. We have our own annual conference on neuroinformatics with uh, associated training activities. Uh, we arrange the Brain Summit every year, which is also where we collect representatives from the large international brain initiatives to talk about uh, things to do with interoperability and data sharing uh, across those projects. Um, so yeah, that's the very short of it. In a nutshell. Yes. Okay. Uh, because we've been dumping some acronyms on people, do should we just maybe explain what what those different things are a little bit, and to sort of like give examples of concrete examples people can relate to? Maybe for, I think for that by now bids bids by now I think people are aware of what it is. <laughs> um, that's just a suggestion of how we could do this. Uh, so you give like, um, you like talk about NIDM or or, or RRIDs or, uh, as well. Yeah, you want to continue with RID? Or we can start with NIDM a... because we have okay. Camille here, who is the best person to speak about. <laughs> Amongst NIDM. others, right? Amongst others, yes. Yeah. But you're one, you're one of the core member of that group. Of course, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to. So it sounds like people know about BITS. So we can just say a few words to remind what BITS is. So BITS is a way to organize your data, um, to make it first, well, to, to organize it in a systematic way, first for yourself. So then you have the data all organized in folders with files, but you also have the metadata. So those crucial pieces of information that you need in order to make your analysis basically um, and bids is based on very simple tools like just having files having folders and organizing them in a in a systematic ways and json's files as well to store all those parameters 
Um, the way in IDM, so in IDM is, is similar in a way that it's also a standard that would let you share your data and your metadata, but um, it's based on semantic web technologies. So it's it's a different, it's more maybe more heavy heavy weighted solution, but it allows for more flexibility basically. So you can have you can organize the data the way you want, but then you basically point to where your data is located on this. So right now in IDM, there is a model for results for functional MRI. And um, as, as, I, as I speak, we are now working jointly with BIDS to have a model that would be compatible between BIDS and an IDM because these two are, are really uh, complementary to represent new imaging pipelines. So provenance, how, when you get a data set, wouldn't it be nice if we could have all the information of how we got there, like which software we use, which parameters, and and and, and everything? Of course, this is a lot, and and we need a like structured way to to share that. Is that a good short presentation of 9DM? Is there anything else you you want me to cover, Matthew? No, that was good. I put some links in the chat there if people yeah. want to check it out. I, th I think I, I would just like to mention something is that NeuroVault, uh, where uh, we tend to share our statistical maps, also just, you want to go for it, Matthew? No, I was going to say, no, but that's also something that INCF was very instrumental in helping to establish, get off the rope, working with Chris Gorgolevsky with uh, funding through INCF. So. Yeah, I'm just going to keep just mentioning that. things. <laughs> I'm going to keep mentioning things, and you come and you, you and you're going to keep going. Yes, we we help with this. Yes, we help with that. <laughs> I like I, I like I like that approach. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, NeuroVault pretty much you can just upload your results directly as an, an, an IDM yeah. results, and it's usually a better practice than just uploading your your just a statistical image just by themselves. There's much more metadata and it's much more complete. And it's very easy to create an IDM results with uh, SPM and FSL. There's like a couple, I mean, FSL, I don't remember, but SPM, I know it in a couple of clicks, you're done. So I really encourage people to have a look at this because this is this is a really useful, uh, useful tool. Remy is um, our favorite users, user in case you were wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> can we, <laughs> before I start blushing? <laughs> so yeah, and, and the nice thing, maybe we can talk about how an IDM and BITS were developed, but these were really developed as like bringing in together researchers from different institutions and discussing together. And, and I mean, it's amazing to see those standards being built like from different people who have different perspectives on why they want to participate to, to that work. But it's nice to see that coming out of the ground. And I think BIDS is, is really successful in, in that, that many people have joined that community and are extending this standard to go beyond just MRI. And I know now there is an EEG uh, model and IEG model and, and so on, and now going into more of the derivative space. So I think it's really, it's really nice to see people coming together. And I think I think it's actually crucial for this kind of work because you can't really build the standard by yourself. You, you have to get some buy-in from different people so that it's actually used by the community and then it becomes really useful for everyone. Yay. Excellent. <laughs> so actually, uh, Camille, as someone who has, you came into OHBN's open science community from INCF, if you can speak a little bit about how that happened for you and your thoughts on that whole thing. Wow, how that happened for me. Well, I first so I first joined the INCF data sharing working group um, when I started my postdoc. So I was a PhD student in, in Rennes. Uh, and in 2013, I joined the University of Warwick working with Tom Nichols. And part of my work, so I was, I was starting a brand new work, like focusing on neuroinformatics, while before I was more doing like statistical analysis of neuroimaging data. So that was a new world, but I, I knew I'd be interested in that one because I had a computer scientist background and that, that sounded like something that was really interesting to do. Um, and I got to meet this group from INCF with like people coming from different places um, who were discussing that NIDM model. So initially it was more 
um, an idea and then together we work to actually build the model. So this was really part of my work uh, as a postdoc. And then I got to meet the OHBM community. So first I got to meet the brain hack community. And I think this is brain hack is really close to the OHBM OS SIG uh, community. Um, the, the founding members are, are of both are common to, to the scripts, a few of them. Um, and so I first got to know the, the brain hack and that different way of working where people would just go somewhere, have not really defined ahead of time what they would work on. And then there was this organic discussions that would just arise and that we tried to run again here, but um, that is really that is really our goal, like just making people meet each other and and make sure that they can share this. Uh, we, we were talking about that this morning uh, during the morning coffee, like there are so many little tricks that we don't talk about when we do a paper. We, we don't publish about this, but if you don't know those, then doing your research is just extremely hard. And for me, brain hacks are really the kind of space where you can have these discussions, like you meet people and really simply you can say, okay, I've, for instance, I've tried this tool and I'm just stuck here. I don't understand what's going on. And by working with others who have that, who've had that experience earlier, you just get, get going much, much more quickly. So we can work together as a community rather than each of us separately. And so after Brain Hack, I got into the OHBM conference for my first time. Um, <laughs> So that was again a, a brain hack attached to it and, and the OHPM hackathon. So meeting that community and then meeting the US SIG, uh, the work of the open science special interest group. So the open science room initially was just, was just a room where things would happen when they would happen. There was no program. Uh, and now it's, it, well, I encourage everyone to go next week and see what the OSR is, is this week. I'm really proud of what, uh, Cass, Cassandra Goodvan Prague and Stephanie Yunis, who are Open Science Room co chair this year, have built together. So, I mean, for me, it's really hard to talk just about INCF or just about HBM or just about brain hack because there is so much, so much things that are common between them. And that's what we would like for everyone else to get to see that there is this commonality between what's going on in OHBM and what's going on in INCF. And we think it would be really good for us to join together. Mm -hmm. There's nothing from INCF pr perspective that says that we cannot support a open science that has OHBM's name on it, as long as we have members from OHBM who are members of INCF who are supporting that and making sure that we can continue to provide financial support to the open science SIG. Because Helena will tell you a bit more about how our um, membership model has changed and that membership model change, change has impacted how we can invest in different communities. Before it was sort of a top down, okay, we invest in this community. Now it's more of a, the members themselves are deciding, this is the area we should invest in, this is what we should do. And then just for you guys, the things that we have that are available for you to continue doing your open science work, even after OHBM, we have NeuroStars question and answer forum that I'm certain of quite a few of you are familiar with. That's something that is, Main, was built may, and maintained by INCF that's open for you guys to use. Um, we have our own um, online repository of training materials. Everyone's invited to use them in any sort of way they want to. And some of these training uh, exercises have, you know, there's always going to be a video. Some of them include a lecture slide, sample data sets, Jupyter notebooks, links to the GitHub repository, and also links to the software that you should use to do that. And this is 100% open to the community. There's no charge for this sort of service. It's our membership that are paying for these services and making them open to the global community. So that's another resource that's available to guys as well as uh, the working groups. As uh, Camille mentioned, the NIDM and BIDS came out of working groups. Uh, Neurovol to a certain extent did benefit from having Chris being a member of a working group and the funds that INCF commits to being able to make these groups come together. So I just wanted to throw that in, but Helene, I give it to you now so you can talk about Well, I think <laughs> while, while we're on that, I think we should also push a little bit for the endorsement process, right? Yes. Because I mean, this, this is a hackathon. I'm sure there's a lot of great tools and, and other kinds of resources coming out uh, of, of hackathons 
maybe not right away, but eventually. And I mean, the um, the benefit of having your tool uh, endorsed by IMCF is that you get a lot of help with the uptake and adoption of, of your tool. Uh, we do a lot of marketing, a lot of uh, advocacy for the centers and best practices that we do endorse. So I really encourage anybody who has something like that to, to check out our endorsement process and see if, if your tool is ready for that step yet. Thank you, Camille. I see you put the link right You're very welcome. in the chat. Thank you. Can you maybe give us an example of the type of things that INCF is looking to endorse? Like what could people would submit as, as a product that could be endorsed? So, yeah. So in the classic sense, we have the standards, standards and best practices. So standard would be bids. Uh, best practice could be COBITAS. If we go by this community, just so I can uh, stay relevant to you guys. Um, when it comes to um, infrastructure, things like that, when we look at for that to see, are these, in, does the infrastructure have um, utilized standards? Does it have, you know, you know, just comparing it to the FAIR principles, how well does it do that? So for that, it could be the Canadian Open Neuroscience platform, could be one example of a platform that would be, could be endorsed. And uh, another aspect of the whole endorsement process, so it's not only that we put this on our website, we give people the, you know, the usage scenarios, we also link it to the training materials as well. So if you don't have any tutorials and demos, we'll work with you to develop those so that you can have them, you can use them on your website. We'll have them on our training uh, portal. We'll advertise them at every conference that we go to. So that's usually OHBM, SFN, um, IBRO. Mm -hmm. And so we, we go a lot of places throughout the, uh, throughout the world. Throughout Not this year, but next year. Not, yeah, next year. <laughs> We've done a lot of virtual meetings this year. It's been really, really tough. <laughs> I almost miss going to them, it's much easier. Um, is is neuroinformatics going to be virtual this year? No, we we've moved it to uh, twenty twenty one. I see. Okay. Yeah. Late so, April. Late Sounds April. like okay. a very reasonable choice, to be honest. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I didn't want to get involved with the virtual thing. <laughs> I think it's like, fun. Yeah, it's, it's fun. <laughs> moving really quickly to virtual has has hit struggle. Yeah. So what we've been doing a lot uh, of helping people with uh, in terms of helping a lot of other conferences go virtual. So we've been helping a lot of courses. So we have um, for the computational neuroscience, it's something called the Neuro Match Academy. So we're leveraging our training space to be able to do this sort of pre-recorded uh, lectures, live Q&A sessions, and leveraging Neurostars and pulling that all together. Uh, we're doing the same thing for Neuro Hack Academy. So that's... Um, what do you call it? Data science with a bend towards uh, neuroimaging. We're mm -hmm. going to do the same thing for their course as well. So we're here pulling everything into training space so you can, no matter where you are in the world, you can watch it. Uh, you can do the live Q&A session or you can follow up in Neurostars and it'll all be integrated into the training space page. And that is something that w is open to, say, if OHBM's Open Science 6 said, you know what, we want to be a member of INCF we want to be a part of this, and you would have your own sort of organizational page within Training Space where all of your content would be linked from, linked to, so it could be quite a good good way to disseminate uh, your information and things that are going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it's, good to know. know. Yeah. I'm always selling the products because I think it's good to have people use them. <laughs> I Can I ask a question that's a bit like uh, spontaneous because uh, I, uh, a couple of people have told me, yeah, uh, I'm working on this product or that product. You should maybe try to pitch it to INCF. And um, uh, I think from my point of view, it was a bit of, oh my God, that's going to be so like, it was always a bit intimidating because it feels like it's a very standardized thing. And I'm really far away from having stuff super standardized, contrary to what some people might think. Uh, and uh, so how would be the, the onboarding process of someone who would uh, want to sort of uh, contribute to what you do? Uh, there are a few ways you can go through the working group mechanism or you can set up your own special interest group and we provide mm -hmm. support for you to to get that group going but i think a good thing with the endorsement process it's not just about getting this incf stamp we've had a few projects that have come in quite early in their process just to get the feedback from the committee yeah. to be able to say that 
okay, this is what you, you need to work on. These are the things we should do. So it's a, it's a two-way street. It's not that we just want to say, yes, no, this is good, this is bad, but we really want to help everyone achieve this endorsement. Because if you achieve the endorsement, that's fulfilling our aims about creating this open, fair neuroscience ecosystem. So that's what we try to do. We try to work with the groups as well. So the earlier you come in, the more support you can receive. Yeah. Uh, we'll also help you with, um, we do. We host lots of workshops and so we make sure that you're participate, a participant in one of the workshops that we thought was applicable to your work. Um, when you're first getting your, um, trying to get your user base and user community at our annual conference, we have um, training days. So you could have a one to two day workshop to um, onboard more users, to have a hackathon, things like that. That's something that we've been working with a lot with Neurodata Without Borders. It's a, a data format for electrophysiology data. Mm -hmm. Work with them to try to get a larger user community, to make it more international, and also to for them to see what the barriers are to adoption so they can start working on those to make it much easier. So okay. we try to give you a holistic thing. We're a laid back group, as you can see, Helena and I. Yeah, yeah. We're both we're the very direction. Flexible. So, and you can't get any more laid back than I am. <laughs> And, uh, and we're very chill, but we do make sure that you get what you need to get out of us. We, we really okay. are committed to open and fair neuroscience. That's yeah. That's so you're, you're totally not expecting a final product to be brought to your, like, to your door, go like, this is what we're doing. It has to be, no, you're, you're, you're going to like, guide people through the whole process. The whole process. We, we can think of bids and IBM, those ideas that have fleshed out into something. Neurovault was a concept. There was a, mm -hmm. you know, a, a rough prototype in the beginning that we work with Chris and the community work with him to, to get it to what it is today. So that's um, how we do it. Yeah. Okay. I, I think no, working, sorry. No, go for it. Working groups are probably a good starting point. Like if it's, if it's an idea that is not fleshed out completely already, then that's, that's a space where you can bring in people and just have those discussions uh, within the INCF network. So um, one thing, just to give a segue into Helena's uh, speaking more about the membership. One reason before our membership was based on country membership, so countries would join. And the problem with that is that a lot of people who were living in the countries did not really realize that they were members, so didn't know how to uh, really get involved and engaged, and we didn't know who to go out and engage with. So now we have allowing individual, institutional, lab membership sort of things. You can come in with your whole lab or you can come in with individual to get at least so we know who you are and we can give you the information that you need so you can better find uh, your way through INCF to get engaged, to get more engagement. So if you came with an idea, say, oh, I'm interested in this, we can look through our membership uh, list and say, okay, here's some other people who are interested in that. We can send them you know, a message. Oh, there's someone who's interested in starting this type of working group. If you're interested, we're going to have a sort of a, a virtual meeting on this date. If you can join, come on in. Let's have some fun. Or we can arrange an in-person meeting at a, a conference as well, where you can get interested parties to come together and uh, meet. So we do all those sorts of things. So Helena, that's you. That was right. Yeah, I don't know where we are on time. Uh, we are thirty-eight minutes of live streaming. Uh, I think our session was planned for forty-five minutes. So yeah, um, perfect. Right. So uh, the membership, then. Yeah. So my screen was froze for a bit. So I don't know what exactly Matthew did say about the membership, but I think you said that originally it was country-based. Yes. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah, so the, um, we had to move away from that model uh, for a number of different reasons. One of them being that it was not really great for community growth uh, because the history of it all was that um, it used to be where somebody got in touch with us through one of our events or heard from somebody else and they rallied their lab or their institution uh, to get engaged and then we helped them acquire the funding. We lobbied to their funding agencies and helped them write the grants and so forth. Uh, and then they came up with the country membership fee, which was quite large. Uh, but what happened was that uh, that sort of group of people, the local node, like we call them, they became sort of a bit of a bottleneck 
for us mm -hmm. to get to the rest of the community in that country. Uh, not their fault. We're not blaming anybody. It's just people who are wearing a lot of hats and have a lot of stuff to do. So it's not really surprising. Uh, but we did realize that we needed to open up the membership to smaller entities. So we spent a lot of last year trying to figure out how that would work. And uh, I think by SFN last year, uh, we had the new model in place. So we, the membership at ISF is now open to institutions, universities, projects, uh, other nonprofit organizations, uh, companies, and also individuals. Uh, at, of course, much, much lower rates uh, than the country fee ever was. Um, so I don't know, I could, I guess I could put up a slide. Let me try to, okay, too many uh, videos. Oh. Never mind. We don't need <laughs> slides. Slides are dull. Um, it's a slide of the person. Link. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll put up the link in the chat and tell you about it instead. So... There's a couple of different levels of membership for, for institutions, organizations, and companies. Uh, I'm actually just going to talk about the individual ones here uh, because I think that's the level we're at. Um, if you become an individual member of, of INCF, you get a lot of great benefits, such as a discount to our uh, annual conference, of course. Uh, you get um, discounted APC if you want to submit your paper to F1000. You get a free year premium account at protocols.io. You get discounted tuition to the Force 11 uh, course, summer courses. Uh, and what we're extra pleased about is that if you join INCF at the very low price of $20 for students and $50 for researchers, is that you are also automatically a member of FENS, uh, I assume, or hope that everybody knows FENS, the Federation of European Neuroscience Societies. Um, we're happy about this, and actually FENCE is very happy about this too, because this is like the first mechanism that they have to bring in people uh, from countries outside of the EU, because anybody can be a member of INCF, whereas the FENCE societies only have European members. So this is a way for FENCE to get in international members, but also a way for us to offer a lot more benefits to our individual members. So the FENCE membership includes like opportunity to apply for free abstract slots to SFN, uh, subscription rates, uh, discounts to a lot of neuroscience journals. Uh, you get access to NeuroOnline, the SFN educational platform. Uh, you get free online access to uh, the European Journal of Neuroscience, for example. You get red reduced registration fees for the FENS forum and, and other meetings. They, um, Organize. Uh, so yeah, the link is right there in the chat. Um, you get access to this and also, of course, access to our lovely community, which is great. They've stuck with us for many years. Uh, so I can really recommend you guys getting involved. Um, you, of course, also get, you know, a say. You get a vote on stuff. Uh, the individual membership has uh, elected positions uh, to some committees scientific one, uh, et cetera. Um, also, I should say that about the, the, the institutional or nonprofit memberships as well. In those are included a certain amount or a certain number of individual memberships. So if anybody here thinks that their institutions or project should become that kind of member, uh, then if you have questions, just get in touch with me uh, and I will answer all of your questions and help you get that process going if that's of interest. Do we have Elena's contact on, on our website next to the talk? Do you know where mm, We do, yes, we have, well, uh, you're gonna get people contacting you through Twitter if, if that's the case. <laughs> that's fine. I conduct a lot of business via Twitter, so it's okay. I put my email address there in the, in the chat, so. So no, just, we, we see that there weren't so many people who'd heard of us before. So I, I would just encourage you to take a look at our website, um, take a look at our training space, Neurostars, you know, you know BIDS, you know NIBM, you know what we're about. So we really would like to get you guys engaged, involved, 
and part of the process because uh, as I mentioned before, the, the sponsorship that we have provided to OHBM's open science initiatives, I will say it like that, because it started off as a hackathon and then it's just kind of grown into something that I don't even know what it is any longer, but it's this large <laughs> ecosystem of events. Uh, it really is going to be dependent on uh, the membership votes and how the members say funds should be allocated into which into mm -hmm. which areas. Just to um, let you guys know that the uh, the Organization for Computational Neuroscience, which is a computational neurosciences version of OHBM, they've joined as a member to be able to steer some of INCF's resources more towards the computational neuroscience side. So we need some more neuroimages in there to keep the balance between <laughs> the two sides. So that's, <laughs> if you want us to continue to support, we need you to join in <laughs> and let your voice be heard. Yeah. Okay. Now it's also about what we were talking about earlier. Like if you come with sort of just an idea or a concept of something, our annual meeting is a really good place to sort of get informal feedback on that kind of stuff or, you know, submit a poster or whatever, uh, or a demo. We have demo slots as well. Uh, it's a really good place because people that com the community who comes to our conference they're very open uh, and they um, they're easy to talk to and they're super happy to give you feedback on your work. So I would really recommend that for that purpose as well. And since you brought up demos, I would like to say that INCF were the ones who brought the demo to OHBM in Singapore. <laughs> we paid for that ex entire experience for there to be live demos at OHBM because in our community, that is a very strong part of how you walk someone through a, a tool software. A poster gives you right. something, but it's nothing like being able to sit there with a laptop yeah. to go through the actual thing. So that's, again- We're much more about. interested in the two-way communication than yeah. somebody just standing up and talking at you kind of thing. I like that. Yeah, I, mean, I think a lot of people here like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, definitely. Cool. Okay. I think we're 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 running we're running short on time, so we should we're probably right wrap up. Yeah. Um, thank you all for so, coming. Yeah. And uh, well, thank thank you, thank you, thank you very much for for joining us. And uh, so, uh, just remind us what would be the best way to contact you. Just uh, we go on the website and just uh, or we email yeah. you at the email address you you just put there. Email Helena. Yes, email me. Uh, tweet at me. You know. Email Helena. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, okay. follow me on Twitter. I make a lot of cakes that I put up there, as Isabel has just pointed out in the chat. Oh yeah, yeah. Her Twitter, like, yeah, her the, the quality of her tweets is amazing. Uh, if only just for just the regular cat pictures, right? Yeah, Scully Jepson cakes and the occasional heavy metal song. <laughs> Good. Okay. So all maybe right. we're going to wrap well, it up. Thank you all. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank, thank you so much. much. Yes. Thank you like a million times. It was great to have you. Definitely. Thanks for having us. Okie dokie. Let's wrap this up. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.